Uh, and the, the rest of the chapter is pretty much the greeters that come out to meet him individually as it, it describes them. Now Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was a, of Behurim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. Okay, here comes Shimei. Uh, with him were a thousand men of Benjamin and Ziba, uh, the servant of the house of Saul, and his 15 sons and his 20 servants with him, and they went over Jordan before the king. <clears throat> so uh, here's one, one of the greeters is Shimei. Well, do you remember what happened when David had to leave town, had to run out of uh, Jerusalem because Jer uh, Absalom was coming in to take over? Remember who went running alongside of him and was cursing him? And, and uh, his name was Shimei, wasn't it? And Shimei had thought that, there were, that David had planned a conspiracy against the King Saul's house. And that's why Shimei was, had, was cursing him and thought, so called him a bloody man and all these things and went along. And, and there again, the sons of Jer Zeruiah wanted to go take his head off right then and just be done with it. And David said, no, no, let him curse. God sent him along because... That's what I needed, I guess. And, that, and so it was fine. <clears throat> and he didn't do anything to him. But they got safely across Jordan. And now Shimei is back to meet him. So he was the one that went out and haunted him all the way out of Jerusalem until he crossed Jordan. And now he's back to meet him again with a thousand Benjamites. Benjamites were known for being able to sling a, a stone at a hair's breadth and, and uh, all these things. And, and so here he basically had his own army plus Ziba with all his servants in his household. And of course Ziba was also of the King Saul's heritage, his house. Uh, Mephibosheth was the lone survivor yet of King Saul's family, Jonathan's son. And so we see all this stuff here. And so he comes out. Now, uh, with Zibon, but where is Mephibosheth? Well, we'll see that later. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Shimei comes out, and all these men with him. Verse 18, and there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what the, he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan. So this, um, these rafts that they used to transport uh, wagons and people and things across the Jordan uh, dryly, uh, probably not a big uh, ferry boat like we think of them in America and Europe, but uh, <laughs> some way a, a means of getting across Jordan dry, uh, safe and sound. Uh, so they came over and gear, uh, yeah, Shimei met him there and said unto the king, so as he, he gets across Jordan, uh, the king gets across Jordan, and here is his old enemy that cursed him when he left town. Let's see what his attitude is now. He says to the king in verse 19, Let not my lord impute iniquity. Don't charge me with the iniquity unto me. Neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Wow, what an, what an admission. Before the king. You know, that's what people just need to do is repent before the king, Jesus, and, and go to the Father through him. Repent and believe and say, I've sinned, I'm wicked, I'm, I need a Savior. And that's what we need to see today. We need people to know that and people to do that, to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here he fell down, came after cursing God, cursing David. Uh, people need to come and now ask for you. God is willing and God will forgive you. If you'll change, have a change of heart and from going your way and go God's way, repentance. Repent and believe and just come and say, 
God, I'm a wicked sinner. I've been so awful. I've used your name in vain. I've broken all the laws that there ever were. Uh, God, I'm uh, just loaded with this burden of sin. But Jesus Christ paid for it. I want the, I want the payment. Uh, so you just come and, and repent and believe. When you have that change of heart and you're seeking God, God will come and meet you. Do you know that? Wow, glory. Wonderful. <clears throat> And so Shimei comes to King David in that way. And uh, he uh, fell down before the king. He admits he's a sinner. And he asks him, please don't charge the iniquity against me. That's what Jesus Christ will do for you. He'll not charge the iniquity against you. Your father, in, the father in heaven will not charge you with any iniquities for the sins that you have committed in your life. And they'll be remembered no more if you'll just trust in Jesus Christ. Come the only way to the Father that has been given. So, <clears throat> he, uh, verse 19 there, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Don't impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou this remember, thou re neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my Lord the King went out of Jerusalem, that the King should take it to his heart. In other words, uh, put aside, you know, uh, isn't it something God puts all your sins aside, all your wickedness aside, all everything you've ever done against God and it put aside, he remembers it no more. Now David couldn't do that, and you and I can't do that. We still remember things that happen, uh, but uh, God can. And he says, I remember your sins no more. And as far as the east is from the west, I remember them no more. Uh, you ever try to find the east by going west or go west and find the east? You just can't do it. it you know, and so that's the way God is with our sins. You just come to Him and with a contrite heart, just believing that He is the King that will forgive you of all your sins. And he has that power. Verse 20, For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my Lord the King. He says, So I've come out and I've come down here the first because I know I've sinned. I know where I stand before you came. Uh, but I want you to forget it. Take it out of your heart and just realize that I'm yours now. Verse 21. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this because he cursed the Lord's anointed? There they go again. They wanted to kill him when he came out of Jerusalem. And now he's repented and believed and, and uh, certified the king that uh, he's on his side. And he's sorry for what he did and he had sinned. And now they want to kill him again. <laughs> Aren't you glad God doesn't do that? Well, you get saved. I'm still going to just kill you because, I, because of the sins you've done. No, no. God forgets it all. It's gone. Done for. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Uh, he cursed the Lord's anointed. Oh, well, uh, that can be forgiven. And David said, what have I to do with you? Here he is again, David, against the sons of Zeruiah. What have I to you to do with you, you sons of Zer Zeruiah? Uh, David, <laughs> David mentions his sister's name a lot in here. That ye should this day be adversaries unto me. Why are you guys against me? Joab uh, and Zeruiah and, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Abishai, Abishai. I always forget the one that got killed by Abner, and I get him mixed up. As a hell. So uh, anyway, ye sons of Zeruiah, that ye should do this day be adversaries unto me. Here you are against me. Why don't you let me be king? Okay. Uh, and that's the way people are with God too. They won't let him be God. Oh, well, you God, you do it my way. I don't like the way you're doing this. Oh boy. <laughs> That death row, I mean, you might as well, well, I won't say anything more. <laughs> you should be my adversaries unto me. Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? You know, the devil's going to come before God uh, at the throne, and he's going to say, you know what a wicked, what a rock, what this guy, you know how he's cursed your name? You know what he did to you, God? 
and says, nope, and I don't care, and you're no longer a spokesperson. <laughs> you know, he says, he's come to me through Jesus Christ, and the shed blood of Calvary, and it's all gone and done. Oh, glory. He says, uh, for do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Listen, when Jesus Christ comes back and sits on the throne of David, the world's going to know that he's king of the world. That he is the king of kings and lord of lords. Woo! What a day that will be, I'll tell you what. Uh, you ought to be there on God's side. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore, verse 23, Therefore the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swear unto him. Uh, Shimei, uh, the king pardoned him and said, You're not going to die. Uh, we're just going to go on. And Mephibosheth, okay, so we, we end with uh, there. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came to meet the king and had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. Uh, so that's been quite a while that uh, he's been not dressed up, he's not cleaned up. And so Mephibosheth came. And it came to pass... When he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest thou not with me, Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth didn't leave Jerusalem, did he, with the king? Well, remember, it was kind of a rush getting out of there. And that was a tight thing because his servant had to see to it what would happen to him. Uh, here, 26, he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. My servant. That was Ziba. Okay, of the house of Saul, of course, that's who, who, um, he, uh, uh, who Mephibosheth is of, Jonathan's uh, son, uh, King Saul's grandson. Okay, you got to remember that uh, here. And, and so David's questioning, why didn't you, why weren't you on my side? Look at what I've done for you, how I gave you back all your land and everything, that, all this. And so David's kind of asking him, so where were you? Well, the servant, he says, uh, he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass that I may ride thereon and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. Remember, he's lame in both feet, both legs. Uh, so he, his servant said he'd do that. And he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. He's saying, uh, King, I trust you and your discernment. You do whatever you think is right, and it's fine with me. He said, and then he goes on to explains it even more. For all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right, therefore, have I yet to cry any more to the king? He says, you did all this for me. I didn't ask for it, but I'm grateful for it. I don't want you, you know, what else can I do? The king said unto him, why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, thou and Ziba divide the land. Well, actually, he told him, no, it's your land, and you let Ziba work it, okay? And so David's kind of, kind of a uh, little bit there, I think, thinking, well, I'm not sure about this decision. If you, if you were a traitor to me, why then, you know, I don't know what to do. And he didn't have time at this point when he's coming back across the Jordan and coming back to the throne. He didn't have time to really research it out and find out what the background was. But I'm sure he knew Ziba well also over the years. And so, uh, in the rush of the matter, he gave him the benefit of the doubt and said, you know, uh, I told you, go ahead and divide the land and give Ziba whatever he needs and you take care of it. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, yea, let him take all, for as much as my lord the king has come again in peace unto his own house. And he says, I don't care about the land, I don't care about this, I'm glad that you came back in peace. You came back and now you're the king. And so, uh, in his own house, uh, that's a type of the second coming, you know. That's the way the Lord's going to come back, we've been talking about. 
And so uh, Shemai and, and now uh, Mephibosheth uh, are again in graces with King David. And that's the way it should be. And so in verses 31 here <clears throat> to 40, we'll see that Barzillai, remember Barzillai the Gileadite? Uh, he came down from Rog Rogulan, went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Uh, he's the one that led this whole expedition to bring supplies to David when he was exiled from Jerusalem, if you recall. And so that was in uh, chapter, the end of chapter 17 of 2 Samuel there where uh, it says, uh, all these people listed in verse 27 when David was come to Manaam and Barzillai the Gileadite of Rogelam uh, brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour parts, corn, beans, lentils, parched pulse, and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind of David and for the people that were with him to eat. For they said the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. Uh, so that's what Barzillai did. David remembers things like that. Uh, throughout his career as king, we'll see that he did that. Even for uh, nations, for uh, Hiram, uh, when he, he remembered what he did in building uh, materials and things that he gave him. Uh, so now that's the Barzillai that we're talking about in verse 32 of chapter uh, 19, 2 Samuel. Verse 32, he, now Barzillai was a very aged man. So how old is being very aged? It gives it here, doesn't it? Uh, even four score years old. Four score, score is 20, so four times 20 is 80 years old. Okay, and that's pretty old even in today's livelihood, isn't it? Once you get to four score years old, you're not worth much anymore for helping people and doing things. Uh, <clears throat> most younger than that. So uh, even four score years old, he had provided the king of substance while he lay at Maenam, for he was a very great man. So Barzillai was a great man, and he helped out all the people in, when the king uh, was exiled from Jerusalem to Maenam. Verse 33, the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? Uh, so he said, Come on up and live the rest of your life with me in luxury at the palace. I want you to be there with me. You were such a great servant and so wonderful in helping us out in our needs when we had needs. <clears throat> Verse 35, he says, I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? He says, I'm 80 years old. Do I even know anymore? Can I discern what's, what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Uh, without my hearing aids, I can't hear voices, uh, especially music, song, birds. Uh, song, the birds are gone. And thanks be to God, I've got some hearing aids that help bring that back a little bit. And I can hear uh, some of the upper notes of the music and of the birds. Uh, but when you get old, that's the way it goes. And it talks about that, I believe, in Ecclesiastes where it talks about that. Uh, Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? He says, I don't want to be a burden to you. Just leave me alone. Uh, thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. And why should the king recompense at me with such a reward? Why should you do that, king? Well, just because the king was grateful for it, you know. Let thy servant, uh, that's the same way with us. You know, we've been talking about this in the spiritual realm and today's realm for a Christian. And so, uh, why should the king recompense at me with such a reward? Why should you be an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ? Why should you be able to sit in the palace? Why should there be mansions prepared for you? Why should there be places for you to live in heaven? 
made specially for you? Uh, <clears throat> why are all your sins gone as far as the east is from the west? Why will God remember them no more? Uh, and here he says, why should the king recompense me with such a reward? Why would the king do that? Because it's in his heart. Amen. Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again that I may die in mine own city and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. Again, burial, we see in the Bible, is the way for Christians to go. This is the way to be done. This is the way it was always done. And not burnings, not burnings, but be buried. It's nice if you can be buried. I'd love to be buried at, on the old homestead uh, where I grew up. Uh, don't know if that's ever going to be possible. But anyway, I mean, it has a cemetery there, but I'm not eligible to go in because I left the Lutheran church that owns it. <laughs> so... <laughs> What, whatever, we'll see what the Lord has to do with that. I don't know where the Lord's going to take me or if he's going to take me and not have me die here. You know, me and my wife just might go up with all the rest of you that are saved uh, here to the Lord one of these days. And that would be wonderful. <clears throat> so uh, he just says, let me go back, be buried with my, in my hometown. Uh, but behold, thy servant Chimham, let him go over with my Lord the King and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. So Chimham was a son of Barzillai, I believe. And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And so the king said, I'm gonna take care of you the rest of your life, Barzillai, even if you don't come with me and I'll take care of your, your servant, your son here, Chimham also. Uh, all the people went over Jordan, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned unto his own place. Now, again, the kiss was used for a special friendship that was given, and we see that, uh, again, if you go back to Joab, you'll see he used that uh, wrongfully on to, to lure Amasa in uh, to be killed. But uh, anyway... Then the king, let's see. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him, and all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. So half of Israel was there to bring the king back. So it still wasn't a completely brought together group uh, before the king. But they are there. Judah came, finally came out and said, let's bring the king back. Why haven't we talked about that? Why haven't we brought back the king? Why has this happened? And so that's where we're at now. They're bringing him out of exile, bringing him back to the throne in Jerusalem. Uh, verse 41 now. Uh, we could take this with the next chapter, but I think I'll read the last of it anyway here. We see that in, there is a lot of friction between Judah and the ten tribes of Israel. And so they, they express that here. Uh, verse 41, Behold, all the men of Israel came to the king and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away? and have brought the king and his household and all David's men with him over Jordan. So they come now, these uh, uh, from the other tribes, the ten tribes of Israel, and they're asking the king uh, in their jealousy, why are they bringing you back? Why haven't you let us? We're the majority in Israel, you know, and we're the ones that uh, were left out through this whole thing. And so now, why did you go to them and let them bring you back instead of coming to us? Well, because they were his, his family and friends and, and all that had stayed with him. We understand that. And so then all the, all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, because the king is near of kin to us. Uh, they were all of the tribe of Judah, or mainly. Wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? So why are you getting upset about this? They asked the ten tribes. Why, what's the big deal here? You know, we're, we're all the same family here. We come out of the same lineage, Judah. Uh, wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all the king's cost? Uh, is, are, we, are we doing something we shouldn't? Is the king providing for us that he doesn't provide for you? That's what they're saying. Uh, what, what have we done that he wouldn't do for you? <clears throat> 
Or hath he given us any gift? Did he come out here and give us a bunch of gifts and say, come, get me back to Jerusalem because I'll give you this and I'll give you that. No, he didn't do that. And so they didn't have that against him, uh, even though there were many of Israel from the 10 tribes. But uh, there's, a, there's a problem here, you can see it, a little friction between them. And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, we have 10 parts in the king. He's more ours than he is yours, okay? There's 10 parts of the king. And uh, make, meaning the 10 tribes outside of Judah. Uh, we have ten parts in the king. We have also uh, more right in David than ye. Why then did ye despise us that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our king? So now they're arguing over who had the right to bring the king back. <laughs> well, they should have all been there. They all were there and they ought to all be getting along. Uh, and the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Uh, so Judah was uh, harder uh, than the men of Israel in their speech and, and their condemnation. And so there was a big, still a big rift there between Judah and Israel. And you can see where uh, after Solomon, how, how the rift came with Rehoboam and Jeroboam and all so forth, uh, how all that took place. But anyway, this uh, bringing back the king and we've kind of paralleled this with bringing back the king, talking about bringing back the King Jesus on the throne that's rightfully his in Jerusalem. And it will be in Jerusalem. That will be the capital of the world, by the way, folks. And if you don't believe that, uh, then you take it up with God and his word, okay? Uh, but that's the way it's gonna be. And he will be on the throne of David. That's what the Bible says. I believe the word of God is true completely. And we look forward to that. We look forward to his return. We look forward to the uh, kingdom of heaven uh, on this earth. We uh, see the prophecies of that in scripture. After, after Daniel, the 70th week of uh, the tribulation time, the Jacob's trouble, time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble time. It's seven years, that's a time period that they still have to serve the Jews have to serve to fulfill their punishment of uh, profaning the Sabbath days. Uh, they've served all the rest of the time in captivity, and now they're once more going to be captive for seven years, and God is going to chastise the world thoroughly uh, with Israel. And so, yes, Israel is not the church. The church is not Israel. In fact, it says that in the church of God, there's no Jews and there's no Greeks. You're all one in the body of Christ. And so we look forward to, to that time that's coming. Uh, and so I hope you got something from this uh, lengthy study of the uh, going into uh, exile and then coming back from exile of King David and how it applies to us today so well. Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you for this day you've given us to just enjoy your word and these wonderful things that are written therein. Again, Father, we love you. We ask that you would uh, continue to uh, save sinners till you see the time that you need to come back and you call your saints home, Lord, and that's a day that's coming soon. We know that. Uh, it's been 2,000 years since the Lord was here and postpone the kingdom offer to the Israel in seven more years Lord and then uh, we can have a wonderful time where the lion will lay down with the lamb and the Satan will be uh, put aside put aside it'll be for a thousand years before you turn him loose for a short time be uh, all uh, put in prison <laughs> Lord how wonderful it to be thank you again Lord for this day you've given us we love you Amen. Let's take our <clears throat> All-American Songbook again. All-American Songbook. Praise God, my voice held out after that rough start this morning. But, uh, God is good. All the times. Let's turn to number 167. 167.
I think this kind of ties the whole morning together. <laughs> I hope you're looking forward to seeing the Lord. <clears throat> oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. <clears throat> Chorus on the last stanza, please. <clears throat> as I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without. And you'll be joy enjoying all the things God has planned for his people. Amen. <clears throat> Joseph, would you um, thank the Lord for this time and for the food and fellowship and stuff to follow? Could you do that for us, please? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for this year, how it's gone so far. I'm that we 